Hi, I'm Denise Gagne. Welcome to Wednesday webinar number four, Eclectic Elementary Music Education. This one is going to have teaching ideas from myself, Denise Gagne, Artie Almeida, and friends that are joining us in the online odyssey, July 21st. We have seen it all in 2020. We've seen schools close, close for six months. I've never seen that in my teaching career. We've seen students learning at home that never thought they would be home learners. We've had to do Zoom lessons. We've created virtual choirs. We don't know what's coming in the fall of 2020, but reports coming out of various states and provinces, some schools are going to reopen near normally. Some will be 100% online, and it's my feeling that perhaps teacher health hasn't been considered enough in the decision to open and that more schools should be online. Some are going to be hybrid, half in person, half at home. And we're going to end up teaching both those groups. I have not quite figured out how a teacher is supposed to teach in person and virtually at the same time, but that's what the districts are going to be asking for. Some music teachers are going to have a classroom and some teachers are going to be on a cart going from room to room. It appears that in almost every case, the students are gonna to have to be six feet apart. They're gonna to have to be distanced. And my own feeling is that many schools may start the year, but if there's an outbreak in the school or a bad outbreak in the community, schools are gonna to have to close again. It seems that in the fall of 2020, singing may or may not be allowed. And that's going to make using the traditional pedagogies that we've taught with for years and years and years really difficult. I call myself a Kodorfin. I have my Kodai levels, I have my ORF levels. Teaching Kodai without singing is going to be really, really hard. Music Play Online, we've uh, made these beautiful note highlight videos for all our reading songs. And I would have the kids hand signing while they listen to these songs so that at least they're developing audiation. They're developing some inner hearing. The ORF process involves a lot of collaborative learning and that again is going to be very difficult. I think I could probably collaborate with a child that's six feet away but our groups are going to be much smaller than what we've had in the past. Anything that we do with movement is going to be a lot more in place. Certainly no touching and uh, we're going to have to modify a lot of our singing games and a lot of our activities. So music teachers need eclectic lessons that can be adapted for small in-person spaced classrooms, that can be adapted for a Zoom lesson, that can be adapted for home learning so kids can do it at home. I'd like to introduce Artie Almeida to you. She is a wonderful educator. If you have been fortunate enough to see Artie teach in a live presentation, she's funny. If she wasn't a music teacher, she should be a stand-up comic. And she creates lessons that are really, really engaging for kids. Her situation at Bear Lake Elementary, where she taught for many years, um, she didn't get to see those kids very often. And so she just crammed as much teaching into a short period of time as she could. The first time that I saw Artie teach, I believe, was on, it couldn't have been the first time, but the first time we collaborated in a workshop was on our cruise workshop in 2020. 2010, so 10 years ago. And in that um, workshop, Artie did a lesson on Alexander and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I think at that time it wasn't even in print. It was print, I think it was released later that year in her book, Mallet Madness. And it's such a good lesson. I know you're going to enjoy it and you get to watch it now. Okay, boys and girls, I see that our time signature, oh, wait a minute, I haven't used that word with you, have I, first graders? It tells us how much time is in a measure, and all we care about at this point in our life is the upper number. What's the top number in our time signature? Two. Right, that means there's going to be two beats in each measure. Hmm, what the heck is a measure? Okay, well, I'll tell you, I'm glad you asked. It's this little segment of our music between the bar lines. Everybody say a measure. Measure. Show your neighbor with your fingers how many measures you see. Why am I not using my laser pointer? That's my question, because I can't find it. There it is. All right, now, how many beats are in a measure? Two. And how many measures do we have? Five. How many bar lines do you see? Those little lines. Do you see a double bar line? Yes. Everybody repeat after me, double bar line. Double bar line. Music stop sign. Music stop 
Exactly. And we get there, we have to stop. Oh, unless there's two dots in front of it. And what does that mean? Right, that's his little eyeball saying, I see the beginning of the piece, get your buns back there now, back to the beginning. <laughs> no repeat today, we're just going to say it one time. Actually, I would like to say the whole thing to you without you saying it with me. Start with the whole, and then we'll break it apart. Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Have you ever had one of those? Yeah. 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 I'm going to say it slower, that wasn't a first rate tempo. Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. What's at the very end of this, boys and girls? You know what that thing is. It is a rest. It's a one-beat silence. Could you show it to me when I finish speaking? I'm going to say day. So it's going to be terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Ooh, be kind of dramatic. Show me a rest. Ready? Here I go as a solo. Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Goes for you. Now, can you clap each measure after me? Meet the you. Terrible. All those voices were windy. Terrible. Oh, maybe it's because I didn't tell you to say it. <laughs> Usually you can find the worst mistakes in your lesson. It can all be tied to your instruction. That's the sad news for us. Terrible. Horrible. No good. Very bad. Day. And in the class you'll have everybody say it after you because they don't feel that. Silence is, I judged Florida All-State saxophone auditions for 35 years, and where do they make all their mistakes? The rest. The rest. They're busy trying to get to the notes, look on ahead. And you know what? We can solve that problem because everything that we did, I took a bath and did it. That's downbeat awareness. And if your kids have downbeat awareness, they won't have that, OK? And you have to grow it early. OK, let's try. We would do two measures at a time. Let's not. Let's just do the whole thing. Are you ready? Be dramatic. I need that contour in your voice. Here we go. Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Oh, you be terrible, OK? You be horrible. You be no good. Uh, yeah, no good, and you're very bad. I always hope the principal doesn't come in. Here's the terrible group. You guys are horrible. <laughs> That's my teacher arrested for child abuse. Ready? You got your measure one, measure two, measure three, measure four, and try and be the group that's the most expressive. You're having a bad day. One, two, clap and say. Oh, boy, that was like. <laughs> I call it rhythm interruptus, but I don't say it for the kids. That's pretty terrible, isn't it? What are we going to do about that? There's only four groups. Mm. What a great idea. I wish I'd thought of that. Here we go. One, two, three, and. Terrible, horrible, no bad day. Oh, that felt good, didn't it? Pick up that instrument. Sticks are terrible. Tambourines play horribly for me. You are no good at those maracas, and I need to hear some very bad drums. One, two, ready, here we go. Um, this is PowerPoint out of the Mallet Madness book, which this was this before it became a Mallet thing. Gosh, I hope the insides are still in this book. It feels like there's nothing in there. I've card coded this thing around so much. And yeah, you just do it with flashcards if you want. Put it together with that. But boys and girls, Judith Yorst wrote about that. And you're going to love this kid. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get permission to have this projected for you. And they said no. So, yeah, you know. Pictures are cute as a button, though, when you get it back to your classroom, go ahead and explore it. Is everybody ready with your refrain? Ooh, I realize I forgot something very important because it's not on this slide. Every time you hear me say the word Australia, every time I say Australia, you're going to do, I would have prepped it with the laps before I gave you your instrument. So we're going to do a crescendo, and what's that thing called when it goes the other way and gets softer? Good for you. Okay, let's do it with our instruments. Australia! Sounds like that in your first grade classroom. <laughs> Here we go, boys and girls. Alexander and the Terror of the Horrible, Very No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Fjord. I went to bed with gum in my mouth. Ooh, and now there's gum in my hair. When I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard. And by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink where the water was running. I could tell it was going to be a... Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box. Nick found a junior undercover secret agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. All I found in my breakfast cereal box was breakfast cereal. I think I'm going to move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a window seat, I'm going to be sick. And nobody even listened to me. I could tell it was going to be a... because the kids don't get it and nobody ever laughs. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. <laughs> we have kids that make that effort in our rooms, don't we? At the singing time, she said I sang too loud, and at counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16 anyhow? I could tell it was going to be a... Yeah. 
guess what? Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. Not only that, he said Philip Parker was his best friend, Albert Moyer was his next best friend, and I was now his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you got a double-decker ice cream cone, the strawberry falls off and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag. Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds. Paul's mother gave him one of those little jelly rolls with coconut sprinkles on the outside. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? <coughs> it was a... because after school my mom took us to the dentist and Dr. Fields found one cavity in me. He said, come back next week and I fix it. I'll fix it. Ha <laughs> ha, I said to Dr. Fields, next week I plan on being in Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot. Ouch. And while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy. And then when I punched him, excuse me, when I started crying, Nick said I was a crybaby and mom came back just as I punched him. I got in trouble for being muddy and for fighting. Let me tell you what, I am having a... Skipping the sneaker page for time. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copy machine, but oops, I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was very careful, except for my elbow. And then he said don't fool around with the phone. Oh my gosh, I think I called Australia. <laughs> my daddy said please don't pick me up anymore. <laughs> we were all having a... Linus that was kissing on TV and I hate kissing. My back was too hot, I got soap in my eyes, my marble went right down the drain and they made me wear my railroad train pajamas. I am so embarrassed to wear my railroad train pajamas. It got worse. When I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow that he said I could keep. My Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out and the cat wanted to sleep with Anthony, not me. From start to finish, this has been a... You know what my mom says? Some days are just like that. Even in Australia. The kids love it, love it, love it, and there's a lot of teaching. Of course, all your teaching goes on at the very beginning, and then they just do their whole ostinato, and they're happy. I've taught for more than 40 years, but in recent years, my teaching has been guest teaching. I go into a kindergarten class, or I'll go into a school and do a residency for a number of days. And one of the residencies that I've done was with the Literacy Alive team in Belize. And I got to go there in November 2019, and we taught librarians and teachers. And what we did, my role in this, was to share strategies that used music to support and enhance early literacy. So at San Jose Sakatsu Roman Catholic School, I taught early literacy lessons with music. And you get to see one of my favorite lessons where I had the instruments out and we did the play and stop game that's in Music Play Pre-K. In the project, the school requested that we do some lessons with the older grades as well. They did singing in the school because it was a Roman Catholic school and the kids would sing for the masses, but they'd never had any formal music lessons. There wasn't enough time in our schedule to actually teach each class in the school, so we had to take double classes. So the situation that I was facing was teaching 50 or 60 kids, not even enough desks for the children, They'd never had a music class, so zero prior experience, no projectors that we are so used to using, no instruments, so I had to use found sounds or body percussion. And all I had was the Alexander story on my too small iPad. It's um, downloadable from iBooks, and that's how I was able to, to have the story with me in the classroom, even though I hadn't taken the book. And because Artie's lesson is so eclectic, it worked in this really strange teaching situation. He arrived at school and he's complaining. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a... Terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend and Albert Moyo was his next best friend and I was only a 
his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream fa part falls off the cone and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag, and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds, and Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, terrible, no good, very bad day. Where are they now? You can see that despite the overcrowded class and the two small iPads, the students who were ages 12 to 15 were engaged in this lesson. Uh, there were some older kids in, in the class and that's because in Belize, where when they go to high school, they have to pay $500 a year and very, it's not, not every child can go to high school. And so standard six, which was the grade level where I read the story, that might be the last year of school for many students. And some of the students in there, you could see were 14, 15, and even they were listening to the story and enjoying the story. So after I had read the story with them and we had done Artie's lesson, I then used the words to derive the rhythm. I had the kids step the beat and we'd say the word, terrible. How many sounds on this beat? Two, I called it TT, I drew it on the board. Um, how many sounds on this beat? One. We called it ta. So I crammed into about two minutes what I would normally take all of kindergarten and first grade to teach. But because these kids were older and we just went boom, 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 they learned to read rhythms by the end of the lesson. So you get to watch a little bit of me teaching titis and ta's in this condensed version. Terrible. How many sounds were on the first beat? And to show that there was two sounds on that beat, I put a line on the top. And if you take, ever take piano lessons, these would be called eighth notes. But I call them titi. I call them titi. Terrible. How many sounds on this beat? There was one. And so one sound on a beat, I call ta. So let's say this, titis and ta's. Titi. That lesson by Artie is a keeper.
when, when a lesson like that works in an overcrowded classroom in a foreign country, you know you've got a lesson that works anywhere. So I'd like to introduce Katie Grace Miller, who teaches in Orlando at Lake George Elementary. She's taught for 15 years. She's been a regular contributor to Activate, and she's, despite being so young, she's already published four books, Get to the Point with her aunt, Artie Almeida, and then three more. And Katie was with Artie and I in Virginia at, uh, in 2018, and she presented two sessions, and we're going to see little bits from both her sessions, movement, poems, and books will be included. So in this little snippet that we're going to see of Katie's teaching, she's teaching a lesson on a poem by Shel Silverstein. With this one, I would have said the poem normally, but then I would ask them, you know, what are those yellow letters on, um, on the screen, okay? Note to sell, friends, I have posters of every single one of these because technology I love technology. I don't want to say it out loud in case it hears me, okay? So um, I, I keep poster. My principal, when I started packing, she was like, Katie, seriously, the posters? Like, Because I, I told her I could She's like, throw them away. And I said, over my dead body, I will take them home and I will place them on my bed and make my husband sleep on the floor. I will not give away these posters because the poster I can count on. Only a fire will take those away from me. Technology, totally different story. So if you wanted to just do this with some markers or something, or obviously when you got a hold of the um, poem anthology and be able to write down those um, words, I put it into that and I like to use that different colors because it helps them to see. So we're going to focus on what? What are those yellow letters telling us? Dynamics. Dynamics, exactly. You've known them, it's great, wonderful job. We're also gonna focus on this pattern right here because we're third graders and that triplet is a new note of ours and we're gonna go clickety clack, clickety clack. Sorry, dum bum bum bum. Triple it tall. Let's try it together and tap on your lap. Clickety clack, clickety clack. Great job, very nice again. That's gonna be your job and I'd like for you to do it in that dynamic that you see. Train whistle friends, do you see your part? Yep, right at the end, all right, with that fortissimo woo woo, okay? And we're all going to go woo woo, all right? And we're going to have our clickety clacks ready. I will say the black words. Can I have my, who had the rhythm sticks? Rhythm sticks are on this side. Rhythm sticks, would you go ahead and take count and be our clickety clacks? I would have said it with the words, we would have done the body compression, and then as a class, we would have taken them out, and on the woo woos, I have them scraped them, okay? But they're going to be that. You guys can pat on your laps. My turn first. Crawled across the railroad tracks. You will surely find out why. When the next express rolls by. So this is a perfect poem, number one, to get your train whistles out, okay, and, and get the kids to do that. However, you're teaching the triplet, okay, so you're getting some good use out of that, but you're also focusing on those dynamics because why is, why did we get louder? Because the train was coming, exactly. Guys, when I was reading this in the poem anthology, I read it with those dynamics, and I thought to myself, well, this belongs in a music classroom, okay? If I read it as the dynamics are changing, that's the way it needs to be presented because I know, I'm sure there are a bunch of other people reading it just playing, you know, pick it back, pick it back. Um, so it was a really, really good way for my kiddos to practice that. I'd like to introduce you to Kathleen Thiessen, who is an amazing lady. I got to meet Kathleen when I was able to do an in-person workshop in Connecticut this year. She is a professional pianist and soprano. She's a conductor, an organist, composer, and an educator. Not many of us have anywhere near the qualifications she has. She's an amazing educator, and she has also founded several Facebook groups, many Facebook groups. She's the founder of the Google Classroom for Music Teachers, which now has over 20,000 members. Kathleen's going to come to us and do a session on Flipgrid, a session on Google Classrooms, and a session on creating a virtual choir presentation. And we're going to see a virtual choir performance that she uh, did with her church choir when things got locked down.
Stacy Werner is a teacher at Rainbow Creek Elementary in Rocky View Division. She was a child vocalist for Music Play, She's My Daughter. And she was a wonderful vocalist as a child on our early recordings. She has an ARCT in piano, and she was the editor of the Music Play Piano Accompaniment, the first editor. Uh, and she's published uh, a number of resources as well. She'll be presenting in Artie and Denise uh, Online Odyssey on centers and ways you can use them in your distanced space classrooms or your home lessons. So Stacy was in a unique situation in that the province of Alberta said you can't teach music during the lockdown. All the teachers were allowed to teach was math and literacy. So any music that she was able to teach was sort of snuck in there and she'll explain how she was able to do this as part of a grade two literacy lesson. Hi everyone, my name is Stacey Werner and I am an elementary music teacher just outside of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I'll be presenting at the Artie and Denise Online Odyssey in July on elementary music centers. And today I'm here to talk to you about different types of elementary music classrooms. And I thought it would be best to talk today about my current situation and how I've been able to integrate music into the learning environment that I'm having to work with right now. Um, so when the COVID-19 pandemic started, um, our schools closed down and the students moved into online learning. And the government in Alberta rolled out a very, um, a very uh, organized plan of how they wanted to deliver instruction. Um, and unfortunately, music was not included in that plan and uh, the teachers were only required to teach math, literacy, and physical literacy. So I was told I am not supposed to be teaching any online music classes on Zoom or any other platform, and that anything I provide for instruction needed to be included in the learning plan and had to fit into those categories. So initially I was placed into learning support and I also assisted our teachers in coming up with their physical literacy resources, which was one place where I was able to integrate some music. So I did some movement songs with the students and some active music listening activities. And then as the learning plans rolled out, I was able to kind of see how the teachers were organizing it and where I could maybe fit in some more music. And what I found a good place for was in writing. A lot of teachers were doing journal prompts. So I emailed the teachers at my school and asked, do you want me to include some music-based journal prompts for the students? And they were all very eager and willing to let me be involved in that. And so I created some different activities for the students to try. And so that's what I felt like I should share with you today is some of those writing activities that I did with the students. And so today I'm going to share with you a song from Music Play 2, Going on a Picnic. You're going to see a video of me and my daughter um, teaching the song to the students. And then the students were asked to write their own picnic list. And if they were feeling brave to record themselves singing their list. So I'm going to show, if, show you the video of us teaching. Then I'll show you a student example of a video of a student singing their version of the song. And then also just some written exemplars. And then in your handout today, I've also included some additional writing activities that I did with the students. here with my special guest Elle and we're going to teach you a song today about going on a picnic. So we got our picnic basket here and it's filled with all sorts of goodies that we're going to share with you. Okay so our song goes like this. I'm going to sing a part and then you echo back and you're going to sing with Elle today on the echo. Okay so I'm going to go first then you sing with Elle. Going on a picnic, going on a picnic, Leaving right away, leaving right away. If it doesn't rain, well, if it doesn't rain, well, stay all day, stay all day. Good. Now I'm going to ask Elle to find something in our picnic basket, and then she's going to find it and sing it back for us. Okay. Did you bring the bananas? Yes, I brought the bananas. Did you bring the peppers? Yes, I brought the peppers. Did you bring the crackers? Yes, I brought the crackers. 
Did you bring the granola bars? Yes, I brought the granola bars. Did you bring the cheese? Yes, I brought the cheese. Did you bring the cucumbers? Yes, I brought the cucumbers. Good, Elle did a great job. She remembered everything on our list for our picnic today. So now we're gonna sit back and relax and enjoy our picnic. And I hope you enjoy using this song for some of your writing activities this week. All right, see you everybody. You say bye, Elle? Bye. Hi everyone, this is our last writing number five. So we have our chips. Okay, first before, before you list it, where are we going? We're going on a picnic. So okay. we have our chips, oil, apple, goldfish, cheese, butter, pepperoni, bread, and Ritz crackers. All right, so. I'm ready to are you guys ready to sing my song? Hey. Did you bring the veggie chips? Yes, we bought the veggie chips. Did you bring the orange? Yes, we bought the orange. Did you bring the apple? Yes, we bought the apple. Did you bring the goldfish? Yes, we bought the goldfish. Did you bring the cheese? Yes, we bought the cheese. Did you bring the butter? Yes, we bought the butter. Did we bring the Ritz crackers? Yes, we bought the Ritz crackers. Did we bring the bread? Yes, we bought the bread. Did we bring the pepperoni? Yes, we bought the pepperoni. Bye, everyone. Dan Fee is another longtime friend, and Dan lives in Fond du Lac. He's taught 34 years. He's a trumpet player as well as being a solo singer. He adjudicates, and he's a frequent presenter at ORF chapters and state conferences. And he's published two resources, Listening Fun and More Listening Fun. And his listening activities, many of them will work well in the spaced classroom. So we're going to show you Morning by Grieg with Scarves from Dan's Listening Fun Book, and it'll just give you a taste of what he's going to do in the online odyssey. We're going in front of you. Slowly bring your arm closer to your head. Keep wiggling. Keep wiggling, but slow.
We're going to keep making those figure eights and take eight small steps forward. One, two, three, four. Keep it a circle if you can. Six, seven, eight. Step backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And kneel down. Figure eights. Christy Noble and Tracy Stenner are two good friends from Edmonton, Alberta. Christy is recently retired, but when she was teaching, she implemented a music literacy program for early education at Mayfield School. And her specialty is doing music that works in inclusive classrooms. So she's developed these so that her lessons are very doable with special needs children. Tracy is uh, also a music specialist, she is currently a teacher consultant with Edmonton Public Schools. So in the online odyssey, they are going to present making music literacy and movement fun for everyone in the inclusive classroom. To allow students an opportunity to experiment with dynamics, their voices, and non pitched percussion, an idea that Christy and I developed was to take the storybook Rumble in the Jungle and have students say a poem after each page as it's read. The poem goes like this. Come to the jungle, what do you hear? Trees whisper softly, animals are near. The first two lines are mezzo forte, third line is piano, and the last line is forte. Students can then take to various instruments and experiment with how they can change the dynamics or play them on their instruments. For example, they might want to use rhythm sticks. It might sound like this. Come to the jungle. What? Trees whisper softly. Animals are near. Egg shakers might sound like this. Come to the jungle. What? Drum. If you're in a situation where students have different instruments, they may want to each take a line and then talk about how they can change the dynamics throughout the poem. So our Rumble in the Jungle that we did is from our stories and so much more book. This is our book four. And the Rumble in the Jungle for Pre-K to K, in, in our book four, all our, all our selections have adaptations for Pre-K, K, one to three, four to six for each for each song. So it's kind of handy if you want to use one song for all your grades. At any rate, on this one, we have activity cards for a lot of our for a lot of our um, songs that we do, and they're printable in color on from the CD. Now, 
you can, uh, we used them and cut them out and laminated them and, and the kids had a set where they could manipulate and do in order and that type of thing. We're not sure in this COVID age if you're able to do that, but it is available should you want to do it. There's also a movie of, that we'll show you just after this of Rumble in the Jungle. And it's, it's really fun for the kids. The most fun is you can use this as a movement activity for the little guys. They're going to roar, they're going to slither, they're going to uh, reach, they're going to swing, they're going to prowl and do all of those things. So there's a lot of vocabulary you can talk about as you do it. So let's watch the movie. Enjoy. fantastic book doesn't matter if it's pre-k k all the way up to grade six so from grades three to six in our book we have a an orf accompaniment with ukulele parts and we also have um the whole thing teach the melody of the song by rote and teach the the parts on the barred instruments and there's the ukulele chords if you if you want those so it's really a fun one to do um, the also the on here we have jungle rhythms much like Tracy was doing a little bit more difficult and for these you can just those are suggested instruments but you can use whatever instruments you have in your kits anything will work so it works really well there's also a syllabication kind of a jungle rhythm page for them to do where they take the word and put it in with the with the proper rhythm and the really fun one that I sent home with the kids was they had to write a persuasive letter asking their parents to take one of these animals home as a house pet. So we had some great ones. I think the best one I had was a giraffe. They figured that they'd give him a duster and he could dust all, above all the uh, cabinets in the kitchen. So it was just lots of fun. There's just so much that you can do this and then go on to a whole unit on Carnival of the Animals if you wanted to. But uh, it's one of our favorites. Carrie Heisler is another wonderful choral director from uh, near where I live. She's taught 23 years and she's one of those teachers that teaches it all. She teaches band, choir, guitar, and she even teaches career and life management to, um, to students. She's been a choral clinician for J.W. Pepper and her published resources include the Strictly Warm-Ups book. 
So Carrie is going to do two short sessions for us in the online Odyssey, one on vocal warm-ups that will work for Zoom lessons, home learning, and one on teaching choir, guitar, band, virtually, because when schools shut down, she was able to continue instruction, and she's going to give us some hints on that. So we're going to see a little snippet of some of Carrie's vocal warm-ups. and so fortunate to have Greg Gilpin joining us for this year's online odyssey. Originally, Artie and I were going to be presenting live in Indianapolis, and that's where Greg lives. He is an award-winning composer, and he's a highly respected choral conductor, director of educational choral publications for Shawnee Press. He's going to do session number two in the online odyssey, Rehearsal Matters, Back to the Basics for Online Learning. He's written a beautiful, beautiful song that I really love called Why We Sing. And we're going to show that to you now. First, a live performance with the Peninsula Girls Chorus from San Francisco. Then a virtual choir performance with the children's choir Staatsoper Berlin and friends from around the world. And this shows you how a virtual, how a beautiful choral piece can be used in person and virtually.
why we teach. Fall of 2020, I think a lot of us are going to be asking ourselves that question. Why are we teaching? The line from the song that Greg wrote that really touches me is, music is a language that will speak to one and all. And I feel so strongly that now as much or more than ever, children need music in their lives. In music class, we can play, move, listen, read, write, create, and hopefully sing. We will be eclectic and we will be flexible, and we will be amazing. If we can't sing at school, we'll get kids singing at home. We'll sing about what's in their picnic. If we have to teach grade two, we'll use music to teach literacy. We'll create virtual performances. Music teachers are creative, and we'll use that creativity to invent new and wonderful ways to make music with kids. And I would like to invite everybody to join Artie Almeida and myself in our online Odyssey 2020. Every year for the past 10 years, Artie and I have done a workshop together. The first one, I think, was still the best on a cruise ship. That was absolutely fabulous. And since then, we've done Vegas and Branson and Dallas and Houston, Chicago, Memphis, uh, Nashville. I'm missing some. Uh, we did um, Washington, D.C. We did Dulles. I'm still missing a couple. But this year, we were planning to be in Indianapolis, and of course, we were going to go to the Speedway, and that's all been canceled. So we're doing it virtually this year, which makes it more available to people who live in the UK or in Australia to come. And we don't have to cut off our numbers either. Last year, our, our workshop wasn't until July, and we had a full list by May the 9th. So feel free to uh, to join Artie and I. It'll be three days of sessions. Your brain will explode at the end of it, but you can do those sessions at your own pace. You don't have to do them in the three days with us, but we will be there for three days doing question and answer and a happy hour at the end of the day where we hope you'll raise a glass of soda or whatever you wish with us and uh, we'll answer more questions and answers then. So it's 25 hours and it's it's going to be lots of fun. I hope to see you there. I want to do some big thank yous. Number one to you who are giving up days off in the summer and joining, um, joining us in this virtual conference. I have a wonderful tech team and I can't do this alone. I don't know how to edit videos. I can't set up Vimeo Live or do all those other things. So this is only possible because I have a great tech team and I have a great music play team and office staff. If you um, want to subscribe to Music Play Online, it's $150 a year for all grade levels. It's the best deal going. As you can see from what I've mentioned in this webinar, if we end up in person some of the time, kids home learning for some of the time, having student access to an online learning tool is going to be really helpful, I think, to our music teachers in the fall. Thank you so much for be, being with me today. I hope you enjoyed the session. Hi, I'm, I'm live here and hopefully you're all seeing me. Um, there were some questions that were um, sent off to the, the host. And so first question, email for Odyssey for picture not working, Karis at musicplay.ca. It should work. Um, I use it often enough. So if you've registered for Artie and Denise and you haven't sent your photo, please do so because this is our way of verifying that you've received our emails. So if you've gotten an email asking for a picture, send a picture or an emoji or a picture of your pet to Karis at musicplay.ca. And if for some reason that doesn't work, send it to uh, support at musicplay.ca and that should work. Um, another question, when will the passwords be necessary for my students to sign into the website? That is going to depend how long the rebuild takes. And the rebuild is going really, really well right now. So we're hopeful that um, sometime in August we'll have a new login and there'll be a side for teachers and a side for students. We don't want students in at all, just the code that you as a teacher have. So we're expecting that in August. It might be September. Um, but uh, students of subscribers will still have access to the website. 
Um, question about music play online. What is the best way to link the lessons for student online learning? So in the current, I'll call it the classic mode, we can link to individual songs and that works fairly well using the search engine. You, um, I could present and show you, but um, it's, it's very easy. You search for a song and then you copy the link in the URL and the, the children can uh, copy that link to get to a song. Uh, the, the best linking was to the online learning modules. And the online learning modules worked really, really well. So you could link to a specific lesson and uh, in, in any particular grade level that you wanted to. I haven't started the online learning modules for August, but I am going to. That is my mission this year. I am going to get the online learning modules built until we catch up to where we started in the middle of March of last year, and then we'll probably edit and, and make them better. So those are ways that you can do it. Most people were using Google Classroom or Seesaw or something like that. And I think what most people did was they put a link into their Google Slides, students clicked on the link, and they went to the activity they wanted. With the rebuilt, it's going to be even easier to link to a specific activity not just the songs. So the rebuild when it comes is going to be better. It's going to look quite different. And so we're going to have classic view and new view available to you um, both until we get everybody gets used to it. Um, from the chat, I love tying in the literacy. Do you have lessons like this in the music play curriculum? Um, I do a lot of work with early literacy and supporting early literacy through music. So in the music play pre-K, there's all the letters of the alphabet and songs to teach each of them. And those are useful, not just for pre-K, but for kindergartens, for grade ones. I don't know about um, the American schools, but we still get kids in grade two who don't know their letters and letter sounds. So right from K to two, those early literacy lessons are really, really good. Um, we also have, this would be a whole session just by itself, how we tie in the literacy. But we have, if you search um, in the search engine for a reproducible storybook, we have a lot of songs where we've put a little printable little book that you can send home with the kids. So I'm, I, I did Farmer in the Dell in my last webinar, and that's one example. Wheels on the Bus. So these are predictable songs. And if you make up these little books, kids can take them home and then they can read along, read. Um, it's for beginning readers to, um, to learn how to do it. The other uh, really good support that I really like is the big class books where I give you a template of a song and the kids illustrate the book. Those are also great sub plans. So more on that in another webinar. That'll be a whole webinar by itself. Um, question six. If we register for the online Odyssey without the subscription to MPO, can we go back and add it? And I'm sorry, the office staff has said they are swamped right now. And to do that is going to be more work than they feel they have time for. So the answer is probably no. Um, from the chat, I just signed up for the online Odyssey class, the deadline for submitting a video for the song, A Wish for Peace. It's passed, but please send us your videos of A Wish for Peace. We want to build a beautiful virtual choir of A Wish for Peace, and we're still accepting videos through to the end of uh, next week for sure, and maybe a little bit beyond. Um, next question. Our district says we have 30-minute lesson. Having to go into each teacher's room, it's riskier, but how to do this? I don't know about you, but I, I have taught on a cart, and it's not the easiest. It, um, it really is hard. And I was following in the chat some people saying, are we going to hook into the classroom teacher's computer and projector, or are we going to bring our own? I like bringing my own stuff. Um, for one thing, I can't disinfect that teacher's computer. I don't think teachers should be sharing supplies. And I don't ever know how they work. They always work a little bit different than my own. Um, so when I've done the cart, I've had my own computer, my own projector on the cart, and all I have to do is to plug in an extension cord into the wall, and you're gonna to have to get your classroom teachers to cooperate with you and clear a path so you can easily plug in when you go into their rooms. Um, but that's what, that's what I would do. 
uh, from the chat. Do I understand that if the school is subscribed to the Music Play Online, the student login will have access to the song movies? Absolutely, yes. All the areas that we opened to students during the school closures last year, we keep open. Uh, we didn't used to have the song movies available for students. Times have changed and we have uh, opened up these new areas and we'll keep them, we'll keep them open as well. Uh, let's see, I think there was one more question. Um, and this, I, I have an apology for this one. Um, the question was, I can't help but notice that all our presenters are white. What steps will, be ta will we take to make sure um, people of persons of color, black, indigenous are included? And that is something that is on me. And I apologize for this. When I put together this, um, this Artie and Denise conference, we, we started this process in February, March, and I certainly wasn't as aware of this as I should have been. And I will promise that if I do a, a conference again next year, that we will absolutely include more Black, Indigenous, people of colour as presenters. Um, I hope you did see some children of colour, certainly in the videos, because we absolutely included those classrooms in in our session but um, this is my my mistake I have I, I'm being much more aware of this and I will do better in the future at least I certainly hope so so if there are no more questions I'm looking through the list and I don't see any more questions I want to thank everybody for coming tonight and uh I hope you join us for the Artie and Denise Online Odyssey. If you don't join us for the Online Odyssey, I hope you have really enjoyed the webinar series. I'm going to continue Wednesday webinars after Artie and Denise. And the format will change a little bit and the time will change a little bit. Um, I'm going to do it earlier in the day so I don't have to keep my staff working late at night because this is already uh, 7 p.m. in Alberta. So we'll be doing it earlier. I think we're gonna stay on the Wednesday format and they will be recorded. So if you wanna watch them on a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday, you can. But what the webinar topics will be after Artie and Denise is the next week's lesson suggestions. Music play is a menu. I don't ever expect